Hello everyone. Welcome to this course on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Key Management. My name is Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. In this course, we will look at how Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Key Management enables customers to encrypt their data using the keys that they control. Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Key Management is a managed service that enables you to encrypt your data using the keys that you control. There are several capabilities which the service provides, including centralized key management features, highly available, durable, and secure key storage using per customer isolated partitions in hardware security modules or HSMs. A HSM is a physical computing device that safeguards digital keys and provides crypto processing. Key management provides integration with select Oracle Cloud infrastructure service, such as block volume and object storage. And Oracle key management service uses HSMs that meet federal information processing standards, also referred to as FIPS 140-2 security level three security certification. This means that the HSM hardware is tamper evident, has physical safeguards for tamper resistance, requires identity-based authentication, and deletes keys from the device when it detects tampering. So this is one of the, the, uh, the higher uh, FIPS uh, certification. Uh, FIP, the certification has various levels, so have level one, level two, level three. Uh, so this is one of the the, the highest possible um, levels and uh, you can you, you can rest assured that using the the HSMs which are meeting this level three set uh, we will we will uh, we will remove all the possible boundary cases so what are the key management capabilities like I said you can create highly available keyboards to durably store your encryption keys uh, you can create keys quickly um, and you can quickly disable keys so they cannot be used by anyone. You can re-enable the disabled keys. Uh, you can rotate your keys to meet your security governance and regulatory compliance needs. Uh, you can define which Oracle identity and access management users or groups can manage keys and keywords. Uh, you can define which IAM users, groups, or services can use the keys to encrypt and decrypt your data. You can define which IAM users or groups can associate keys with other OCI resources, such as block volumes and object storage buckets. Uh, you can monitor the life cycle of your keys and keywords using another OCI service called Oracle uh, Audit service. And you can delete keywords that you no longer use. So let's look at some of the uh, some of the screenshots from the service and how you use the service. So the first thing you see here is this thing called a, a vault. And I have a vault created here, which I have named for lack of a better name as vault one. Now, what are vaults? Vaults are logical entities where key management creates and durably stores your keys. Vaults are backed by highly available per customer isolated partitions on hardware security modules, HSMs, right? So you can see HSMs, HSMs here. And these vaults are logical entities where we keep uh, the keys. Uh, and the, in the back of uh, vaults, uh, we are using the, the HSM. Some people also call key management as a managed HSM service. Though I think you know it's, it's, it's okay to not get into that discussion. Just remember, vaults are logical entities and vaults are backed by uh, highly available per customer isolated partitions on hardware security modules. Now, uh, the whole idea here is to create these keys. Uh, keys are logical entities referencing one or more key versions which contain the cryptographic material you use to protect your data. So how do you create a key? Uh, it's very straightforward. There, there's, a, there's a link here, you click on that, you create, create a key, you provide the compartment uh, where you want the keys to, to reside, uh, you provide a name, and then you choose a key shape uh, algorithm. Key management today supports advanced encryption standard AES uh, and the key shapes supported uh, include 128, 196 and 256 bits. So depending on what uh, kind of encryption uh, uh, strength you need, uh, you could choose your uh, you, the size of the, of the key. 
Now you can also rotate uh, keys. When you do that, the, the first thing it says is, are you sure you want to rotate the encryption key? So I have this key which I just created and I want to rotate that key. So I say yes, click on, on rotate keys. And then what it does is it creates uh, another version of that, uh, of that key. Each master encryption key is automatically assigned a key version. When you rotate a key, service generates a new key version Periodically rotating keys limits the amount of data encrypted by any one key version. Uh, the advantage here is you reduce the risk of a compromised key. So it's a best practice to keep, um, you know, rotating your keys uh, over a specific uh, period of time. And as you can see here, uh, when you when you do that, you you can you can click and right here you can see the two different versions uh, of the key, uh, but but both of them have the same uh, Oracle Cloud uh, identifier, the, 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 the unique identifier, which identifies uh, the resource. So the key's unique OSIT remains the same across rotations, like I just said, uh, but the key version enables the service to seamlessly rotate keys. Uh, you cannot use, just keep in mind that you cannot use an older key version for encryption after you rotate it. But the key version remains available, like you can see here, to decrypt any data that it previously encrypted. So just keep that uh, in, in mind. Uh, as I said uh, at the beginning, uh, the key management uh, integrates with uh, ident OCI Identity and Access Management Service. And uh, let's look at how that uh, integration looks like. Keep in mind that only users, groups, or services that you authorized via, via an IAM policy can use the keys by invoking key management to encrypt or decrypt data. Let's look at some uh, examples. Uh, before we get into the examples of the policies, uh, also a best practice is to have um, uh, separate compartments for, for the keys. You should not put the keys uh, in the same compartment as your other resources. This is just a clear uh, separation of resources. Um, so, you know, in, in, in case you want to, uh, to manage them uh, more effectively, uh, it, it, makes, it makes more sense. So let's look at some of these example uh, policies. The first policy here allows the group uh, vault administrators to perform all management actions in the vault compartment. So we have, like we said, uh, best practice, there's a compartment called vault compartment where I'm going to create the vault and the keys. And there's a group called vault administrators. Now this particular uh, admin group might be only a few security related admins uh, who manage uh, the keys within the organization. So these will be different than your storage admins, your network admins, uh, etc. Right. Uh, so this is a very um, sort of a generous policy saying that vault administrators uh, can manage, meaning that they have the highest level of access vaults. So this is my resource uh, in compartment, vault compartment. Right. So very uh, straightforward uh, policy. Now the next policy allows the group key administrators. So now we have a different set of admins who just manage the keys. They have no visibility. They they, they cannot uh, they they cannot manage or delete uh, a, a vault. Uh, so these guys can manage keys and use the vaults, right? So they have visibility into the vaults, uh, but they they just use it, right? So they cannot they they can read from it. They can use it. They cannot delete it, for example, right? So uh, it says um, group key administrators to manage keys in compartment vault compartment, and they because the keys uh, are residing within the vault. You also have to write a policy which let them use the vaults. Uh, otherwise, they will not be used, able to, to manage uh, those keys in that uh, vault compartment. So, uh, so until now, what you have done is you have created a vault administrator, uh, given that admin group ability to manage the vaults. You created a key administrator and uh, provided the, the ability, uh, given the ability to, to those at the key administrators to manage the keys. Uh, and of course, to, to do that, they have to use the vaults. Now you could you could uh, define an, another admin group which could use these uh, these keys right so you could do that in in my next policy I'm writing a policy to allow object storage service and the block volume service uh, to use the keys because remember you also have to not just give it uh, write a policy for your users and groups you also have to write a policy for the service so that the service is able to use the keys. So the first service, uh, first policy says allow service object storage, uh, and this is in this particular region. So uh, it's it has that uh, uh, endpoint uh, in in different endpoints in different regions. Uh, it's a regional service to manage keys 
uh, in compartment vault compartment. Uh, and the second policy says block storage allows service block storage to manage keys in compartment vault compartment, right? If you don't write these uh, policies, uh, your object storage service and block volume service will not be able to use the keys. So when you go there and you want to encrypt or decrypt your block volumes or your object storage buckets with the keys which you provide, uh, it will fail. Uh, so you need to authorize it. You need to write these uh, policies. Now let's look at how the block volume encryption happens here. Uh, so you can see um, see here. The first thing I do is uh, when I go into the uh, into the uh, into the console, uh, there is this uh, box which pops up uh, right here at the bottom, which says encrypt my block volume using key management. So right here I'm just creating a new block volume. Right, I'm saying what is my name of the block volume, what is the availability domain, what is the size, uh, if I have a backup policy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, right at the bottom, there is a checkbox which says encrypt using key management. So you check that box and then you can say that you can see here it says keys can be used to encrypt and decrypt your data. First thing I need to provide is the vault compartment. And again, as I said, uh, it's a good best practice to keep uh, a separate compartment uh, for your vault and the keys uh, in that vault. So I have that uh, compartment listed here uh, and then it says what is the name of the vault? So like of a better name, I have Vault 1 uh, and it says, uh, where is my master encryption key compartment? Uh, it's it's right here. Uh, and then it says, what is the key, right? Uh, and I can I can provide the key here. And once I do that, I, I click on create block volume. You can see that right here, I can see that encryption key, right? This is the encryption key I used to uh, encrypt my block volume. Now, uh, you can edit or uh, unassign a key. So as you can see here, uh, there's a button called edit or there's a button called unassign. Uh, even when you unassign a key, you remember your data is always encrypted in OCI uh, because we always do a server side encryption, both for block volume as well as object storage buckets using a server side encryption key, which Oracle controls. So even if you unassign, it doesn't mean that your data becomes unencrypted anymore, right? Your data is always uh, encrypted. So what are the, some of the key uh, design considerations when you are using key management? The first design consideration is it's a regional service uh, and it, we replicate uh, encryption keys across three ADs uh, in a region. As you recall, our regions are comprom comprised of uh, three uh, separate uh, availability domains. Block volumes and object storage are uh, currently integrated with uh, key management. Uh, rotating a key does not automatically re-encrypt data that was previously encrypted with the old key version. This data is re-encrypted the next time it's modified by the customer. Very important, keep in, keep in mind. If you suspect that a key has been compromised, you should re-encrypt all data protected by that key and disable the prior key version. We looked into this use case, right? Where it's a good practice uh, for your security compliance, uh, regula regulatory compliance that uh, and governance purposes that you should um, you should um, rotate your keys uh, over a specific period of time. Today, you cannot import a key from your existing key management solution to Oracle Key Management. You cannot export encryption keys from Oracle Key Management key vaults to your on-prem environment. So from on-prem, getting the keys in uh, and from key management, OCI key management, getting the key out, both, uh, you, you, it's, uh, both you cannot do today. It's not supported. Also keep in mind that today you cannot delete keys, but you can disable them, uh, but you can delete key vaults. So there's a there's important dif difference here. De you can delete key vaults, uh, but you cannot delete keys, but you can always, of course, uh, disable them. Uh, when you schedule the deletion of a key vault, uh, you do that by configuring a waiting period uh, of deletion from which which lasts from anywhere from seven to 30 days. Uh, the key vault and the, and the keys created inside the key vault are deleted at the end of the waiting period. Uh, and all the data that was protected by those keys is no longer accessible, right? Makes sense because you delete the keys, you, you, you delete the key vault, uh, the keys get disabled. Uh, and so your data which you used, or with the, which was encrypted earlier using those keys uh, is no longer accessible. Uh, after a key vault is deleted, uh, it cannot be recovered. Um, so there's no like an archive kind of an option. So keep in mind, uh, you you know if you have a use case where you want to delete a key vault, uh, just keep these uh, this design consideration uh, in in mind. 
and and right here there is a bunch of FAQs uh, which talk more about uh, some of the other things or uh, design considerations. So you should go and take a look at uh, the, the list of frequently asked questions. Last thing, let's look at the key management pricing. Uh, when using the key management, you pay an hourly fee for each key vault that you create and you are charged at the end of the month for that month's usage. So as you can see here, I have the pay as you go price as well as the monthly flex price. And the metric here is the, the vault per hour. So every hour you you uh, use the vault, you pay for that uh, for that hour. You are not charged for the keys that you create inside your key vault, so you can create as many keys as you want, uh, and the, and you are not charged for using the keys with any of the supported Oracle uh, OCI services uh, like like block volume or object storage buckets. Uh, you aren't built for the use of key vault that is scheduled for deletion. So remember that seven to thirty day period. You are not charged for that uh, period. But in that uh, seven to 30 um, days period, if you cancel the deletion of your key vault uh, during that waiting period, uh, your billing continues or resumes as, as was the case uh, earlier, right? So uh, again, there's a link here, uh, which, which has more details on the pricing for uh, key management. So with that, let's summarize some of the things we looked into this course. Uh, key management is a managed service that enables you to encrypt your data using keys uh, that you control. It provides centralized key management capabilities as we saw leveraging FIPS uh, 140-2 uh, security level three hardware security modules. And remember, this is one of the highest levels of security um, certifications uh, as it comes to uh, encryption and uh, HSMs. Currently, um, the service is integrated with OCI block volume service and object storage uh, service. And it also has integration with uh, Oracle uh, Identity and Access Management uh, Service. And this IAM integration defines which IAM users, groups, or services can use keys to encrypt and decrypt your data. With that, thank you so much for joining uh, this course on Oracle Key Management. I hope this was really useful.